at the time I was actually living, I was living in a retreat center that was all vegan. Um, we happen to have, yeah, it was, you couldn't, you couldn't even bring a piece of meat on, on the property. So I was living in like, kind of like a little, not a hut, but it was like, um, like a clamper, you know, like a fancy camping type of situation. Um, I had it all. I mean, it was, you know, it was nice. I had four walls, windows, doors and all that. It wasn't a bad situation. It was really, and it was beautiful because it was Hawaii, but I'm cooking, you know, I'm secretly cooking meats inside my room and like i'm lighting incenses all around because i don't want the neighbors to like smell like you know i this turkey tail and I, I'm, a, I'm a chef so i'm cooking like i'm finding like you know from um from tail to snout i'm finding all the cuts and i'm like oh wow sweet breads oh like tripe oh my god i gotta cook this it's been a minute you know i was just like i went from zero to a hundred Pablo, how did you find Carnival? So, uh, short story long. Um, my story is sort of like other people that are in the carnivore space. Um, I was I was vegan at one point, and um, so I was just searching for for health and um, searching, you know, for. Um, a better way of living, uh, better, you know, for the environment, for myself. And so my, my story goes back a little bit before that. Um, I'm a professional chef. So I started working in kitchens um, almost 20 years ago, and I've worked uh, all over the world, I could say. Um, you know, I've done private chefing. I own my own restaurants at some point. And in 2016, as uh as some people might know two important ingredients that are used in a lot of kitchens are drugs and alcohol i checked myself into a rehab um after many years of of uh of drug and alcohol abuse i'll just be be honest with that and so when i was in rehab um i wanted to uh find um i wanted to find a better way of living when I got out. And that's when I found veganism. Um, I basically started working at this restaurant in Miami. Uh, it's a, it was a vegan restaurant. I got hired as one of the sous chefs. And um, I just started, you know, diving in. I mean, I wasn't completely vegan at the time, but I was trying, trying my best. And I was learning a lot about vegan cuisine and, and how to uh, implemented into my own personal life. And um, that's actually where I met my wife. Uh, she came in for a job. She had just uh, finished her culinary school as well. She was, she was actually a raw vegan. And for some who don't know what that is, it's basically everything is raw, right? As it's, uh, as it's stated nothing's cooked. Um, there's a lot of fermenting, a lot of, um, you know, it's a very, very high production uh, cuisine because you have to prepare things uh, ahead of time. I mean, sometimes 24 hours before you can eat, <laughs> which is sort of sort of an art, I guess. Right. Um, uh, but that's besides the point. And she was she was vegan for about 10 years at this point, or maybe a little bit less, maybe um, some, somewhere around that time. And I think in the last few years, she uh, she hopped on the raw vegan uh, wagon and um, because she had a lot of uh, problems with gut issues, anxiety and food was that one thing that she was healthy, um, even though it was vegan. She eliminated all the processed foods, you know, all the soft drinks, all the all the uh, processed sugars. So she was like on that on that path to to health. And so when I met her, I, I was like, well, OK, like, let me try this out. This seems kind of exciting. And um, so I started in, we we both became raw vegans. We left the culinary scene. We went to a retreat center in Arizona, in Patagonia, Arizona, which is up in the up in the mountains. 
uh, that's where she graduated from this culinary school. And they invited her back to be a chef at the cafe for the, for the retreaters. And I, being a professional chef, I decided to jump, you know, just to go along with her. And, you know, we started doing a lot of juicing. We were eating, um, I mean, a ton of juicing. We, we got the expensive $500 juicer because it was going to be like basically everything that we ate was just going to be, you know, juice and vegetables, uh, especially everything raw. So there was no beyond beef. There was no impossible burgers. And this was like 2017. And I think that's when actually uh, those things started to come into the market more. All the processed foods, it almost seemed like veganism was a was was trending at the time and maybe i picked up on that you know on that wavelength and and i jumped in because i was watching a lot of videos on veganism and what's interesting actually i was working i was working on a yacht for the first time i got a job on a yacht uh from a friend of mine who's who's a, who's a chef as well he asked me you know could you work this this gig it's six months so I said, yeah, sure. Um, let, let me do that. You know, it's good money. It's in the Bahamas. It's, it's on a yacht. How can I say no to that? Right. Um, at the time I was still eating meat and cooking meat and I had just met my girlfriend. Um, but I started to get into the veganism, um, at the time. And so I'm cooking for this, for these charters, cooking for the guests, but at the same time I'm watching, um, vegan activist videos uh on youtube so i it started to like you know uh, I, I started to kind of i don't know fight a little bit myself uh, you know i i just didn't know which which route to take i was cooking eggs and beef i was i was cooking everything that they would you know they would go fishing and um i would you know i would be cooking that stuff but at the same time i'm watching these vegan videos and i'm like Hey, do you know where you do you know where your 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 food is coming from? Do you know the the suffering? You know, based you know the uh, the typical uh, conversations you have with with vegans, right? It's it's always seems to be that that same that same um, rhetoric of like you know do no harm and it's 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 better for you and uh, you could live a healthy life um, eating plant based. You, you can thrive and all that. So I left the boat um, six months later, and that's when we went full. I went full vegan, um, and for the next five years, we worked at vegan restaurants. Uh, we opened up two vegan cafes. So at one point, we moved to California. I'm from Florida originally. That's where I'm at right now. I moved to California, um, and we opened up a vegan pop up. So it was like a sourdough pizza. So we, we were doing, you know, like we were making everything from scratch, the cheese, the, the mock meats. So it was healthy, like we weren't using Beyond products and we were, you know, we weren't really using, we were using just good clean ingredients at that point we expected, you know, or we, had, we, we, we thought we were at least. And, you know, it was organic and um, the pizza business was going well and we were like, okay, how do we, you know, we, we wanted to take it to the next level. I mean, we wanted to be in every store. We wanted to be at, you know, have more restaurants, but then COVID hit and it kind of killed the business, uh, which, which was, you know what, honestly, it was a blessing in disguise um, because, uh, you know, it was, we were eating incorrect food. You know, now that I look back, I was eating a lot of poisons and whatnot and I should mention this, but like, as I was, when I was vegan, um, and I, I'm not trying to make the story all about how negative veganism was, but it's part of the story of how I found carnivore. And my, my body was, was, uh, like 20 years older than, than my actual age. So I had pains in my joints. Uh, I had lower back pain to the point that I was going to acupuncturists. I was going to chiropractors. Um, I was having my 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 girlfriend at the time. Um, she would she would sit on my back or like you know like I would have to just apply a lot of pressure 
no, I know now that it was inflammation, um, that, you know, from the foods that I was eating, but I just kept, I kept juicing and I kept eating more sprouts and eating more, you know, fermented this and just trying to like up the nutrition, no value or, or count in my, in my food. Because I thought that if I ate more of that, then I would be feeling better. But the more I ate, I actually felt worse. And I just kept hearing people telling me like, oh, well, that's just de you're detoxing. You know, that's always a story like you're in pain or oh, you're detoxing. It's normal. I'm like, wow, OK, I must have been really toxic because this feels like, you know, this this feels like it's never going to end this detox. Like and it's, it's interesting how that happens. Like, you know, you start eating it and you become sicker. And I was like, OK, you know, I just thought it was I thought it was normal because all the influencers, all the vegan influencers that I was following at the time, they were doing the same thing and they were preaching about it. And so, all right. So we're, so my, my body's killing me. I have, I literally have no, um, no energy to go to the gym. I have no, like my, my mental, my, my depression, I guess you could say, I started to get really depressed. I, I was never, um, clinically, um, uh, determined, you know, to, to be depressed, but it, that's what it felt like. You know, I was, uh, I was really struggling a lot and being that I was, I was sober or trying to stay sober, that made it even more difficult. Right. Because like now, um, you know, I'm having all these like pains in my body and, and that's kind of why I started doing drugs in the first place is because I had a lot of pain in my body from working in restaurants, standing up 20 hours and just, you know, just a lot of, a lot of grunt work. I started taking some painkillers and that's kind of what led me to, to rehab was, was taking these painkillers because I needed to continue to work, but my, my body was just aching and, and that didn't help at all. So it was a struggle uh, to, try to stay sober and at the same time, try to be healthy with this vegan um, way of living. And um, so we just, we, we kind of, you know, just brushed it off. Like, okay, this is, this is my life. You know, I was actually thinking about doing surgery on my back. I would go to doctors and be like, there's something wrong. There's like, I must have like a, a herniated disc or something. It must be, and they would not see anything, you know, maybe I wasn't doing the correct test. But I didn't have, you know, thousands of dollars to pay for for tests to see the inflammation. I don't know what kind of tests you have to get done for that. But I just kind of I lived with the pain. You know, I was just like, OK, well, I'll lay down as much as possible until I need to get up. That's that was kind of the that was kind of my my daily uh, routine. So um Fast forward a little bit after we closed our businesses in um, in California because of COVID, our friend of ours invited us to open up a restaurant in um, in Hawaii. So we uh, we went there. He had a he had a cafe at the time and it was doing it was doing really poorly. So we decided to go help him and, you know, kind of just revamp the restaurant and create a new one and a new menu. And so these two restaurants were actually vegan. One was a, one was a vegan cafe. So we were serving our sourdough products. And then the other one was, uh, was an ice cream shop. Um, so we were making, you know, using macadamia milk, we were making the ice cream base because macadamia is kind of grow wild out there. Yeah, we were, you know, we, we were chefs at the end of the day. So we wanted to be still creative. We didn't want to use all these like xanthan powders and soy lecithin, you know, like all these, you know, powders um, that most people are using in most of those chemicals are being used in, in the food today. So we wanted to kind of stay true to like, you know, clean ingredients. And at that time, um, you know, still, I have a lot of pain in my body, my mind, I'm, I'm just super depressed. I'm, I'm angry all the time. I'm fighting with everybody. Um, I'm just not, I'm just not happy. 
you know and so we me and my partner we ended up splitting my business partner and uh he ended up kind of just buying buying us out me and me and my wife he bought us out we had we had some money now and we're like you know what we're in hawaii uh let's just take off a little bit of time let's take off you know as much as we as much time as we can this is the first time in 20 years that i that i took off from work and i was just ready to um to you know to live my life a little bit so we left the restaurant this is the first time i'm, I'm out of cooking i'm out of the vegan scene in the first five years and that's when i started to like i started to watch videos and you know hawaii has a lot of farms so the markets have a lot of like grass-fed beef from you know kona farm like a farm like you know a few miles away and i was like oh wow that's that's different you know like this this stuff is you know i started to look at meat and i started saying wow this 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 food looks pretty good you know and a little background on me i'm argentinian so meat is like in our blood basically you know we eat a lot of it and and at one point my parents thought i was losing my mind because i wasn't eating any meat um but I started diving in to more like keto carnivore videos and I started to like inform myself. And I think I found I think I might have found like a Sean Baker video or a Paul Saladino at the time when he was still carnivore. Um, and I just started like, you know, hearing about the benefits of eating meat and eating um, less plants and plant toxins. And then David Gundry, Dr. Gundry uh, came into play and I started hearing about plant toxins. And like my mind was just like, oh, my gosh, like I was I was so confused, but I was so um, relieved that it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And then I started hearing about like regenerative farms and um, how the farming practices like, you know, regular agriculture is is worse for the planet and you know all all of that um so i'm this is in 2022 and i'm diving into carnivore and i started incorporating a lot more meats into my diet um at the time i was actually living i was living in a retreat center that was all vegan um we happened to have yeah it was you couldn't you couldn't even bring a piece of meat on on the property so I was living in like kind of like a little not a hut but it was like um like a clamper you know like a fancy camping type of situation um i had it all i mean it was you know it was nice i had four walls windows doors and all that it wasn't a bad situation it was really and it was beautiful because it was hawaii but i'm cooking you know i'm secretly cooking meat inside my room and like I'm lighting incenses all around because I don't want the neighbors to like smell like, you know, I this turkey tail and I, I'm, a, I'm a chef. So I'm cooking like I'm finding like, you know, from um, from tail to snout, I'm finding all the cuts and I'm like, oh, wow, sweetbreads. Oh, like tripe. Oh, my God, I got to cook this. It's been a minute. You know, I was just like I went from zero to 100. Kind of like an alcoholic would. Right. Like once you start, it's just like kind of just let me let me I dove right in and I started eating all meats and fruits. I was doing fruits at the time because fruits were growing local there. And um, I, I started feeling a lot healthier. I'm going to the gym again. My my mood is better. My brain came back. So I'm like I'm thinking like I'm a lot more clarity. I just feel like a sense of like Zen, you know, it was like, like I thought veganism was all about spirituality, but it was not, it was like, I was so angry when I was vegan. And now I realize I was probably angry because I was missing a lot of vitamins and nutrients. It wasn't like, um, I'm angry because you're not doing this certain thing. You know, I'm like, I'm angry because I'm missing these nutrients, but I was blaming the, the animals, you know, I would say, Oh, you're you know you're a murderer, and really, I was just killing. It was killing myself, basically. You know, uh, ironically. 
Um, I didn't stay carnivore at the time. I moved, we moved, we left Hawaii after about a year and we moved back to, we moved to California again. And um, I started eating basically everything again. You know, I mean, I'm eating a lot more meat, but now I'm including like an omnivore diet. So we're eating vegetables and everything, you know, we're, we're, we're making pastas from scratch and we're making curries and all of my background in, from all these, you know, hundred restaurants that I worked at, I'm including that into my diet again, because it's been five years. I've been eating this fake meat for the last five years. And I, my, my wife who's vegan would tell me like, instead of eating this beyond burger, why don't you just eat real meat? Like she would literally tell me to eat real meat and she was vegan. So she wasn't vegan for the animals as much as I was. She was just vegan because it was like healthy for her. I mean, she cares about animals, but she, she was like, yeah, I'm just doing this for me, you know? And so she wouldn't eat any of that, that gross, you know, fake, fake meats that she was luckily like still like very healthy and like food conscious. So Luckily, I, you know, I had her in my life to kind of, to kind of uh, uh, persuade me to, to to eat meat again, and she was my partner, so I'm like, okay. And so I started eating meat, and she started to see the benefits of that, and I started to like, you know, I would come home and and be like, look what I learned today from you know, Dr. Chafee. Uh, I, I was like, dude, can you believe like? you know, saturated fat is actually not bad for you. Like I would come home and, and debunk everything that we've, where, that we've been taught the last, you know, five years for her 10 years. And, sorry to interrupt. This is around 2023. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh 2023. Exactly. Exactly. So this is like the very end of her being vegan as well. She, um, she started to eat, incorporate meat as well, you know, with me, um, for the first three weeks, it was really hard for her because I think, um, she was like strict vegan, like, like, you know, with the raw at one point that her gut microbiome was, um, was kind of like that, that environment was for plants only. So for the first three weeks, she didn't have a taste for me. I mean, she was just, she was kind of just putting it down, um, just because, she saw how like she realized how how much healthier she could be by eating proteins and essential fats and and whatnot um so after about three weeks then she started to get a taste for it you know and um actually now we're we're both carnivore um so we we both went from you know swinging left to swinging right all the way which is which is awesome to have a partner um you know that that can stick by you and you guys have the same uh the same um uh views on on certain things so i'm really 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 blessed with that 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 she you know that she decided to like you know because she wasn't in it for the animals she was in it for health when i started telling her that this was healthier for her then she kind of you know she, she started to also dive into it watch videos as well and and uh, now she knows the benefits of it as well. Um, so end of 2023, um, I did a carnivore reset. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go carnivore. And this was in October. I went carnivore for about three weeks. And one day I ate something with like a lot of black pepper in it. And it just kicked me into like, a. I guess it was keto flu. I don't know. Some people were saying it was COVID. I'm like, hey, listen. It is what it is. I'm sick. You know, it doesn't matter. So I stopped eating meat. Like I couldn't eat anything for days. And I started to incorporate things like I was, you know, just to be a little open, I was going to the bathroom every five minutes. So I, I started to incorporate rice into my diet because my mom, my mom said something like, you know, you got to eat rice, right? Because that's like chicken and rice soup. You know, that's like the, the remedy for a stomach ache. And um, I had a stomach ache. I was sick. I'm pretty sure it was keto flu. It really, you know, I, I never got it diagnosed, so I'm, I can't be, I can't be certain, but I stopped doing carnivore at the end of 2023. And then I said, okay, I'm going to try it again in January. So January 1st, 2024 this year, 
I went carnivore again. This time I documented my, uh, you know, the, the whole 30 day um, uh, window and I did it, but, uh, but there were certain times that I fell off. Like it was my 40th birthday, uh, January 10th. And I ate like cheesecake, you know, I, I wasn't like serious about it. I mean, I was, but at the same time, like I was, it was, I was struggling because I was addicted to it. And, um, so, you know, the sugars and, and the carbs and especially, especially the sugars, the sugars is what really like, I'm like, oh, I'll just make a smoothie with like a banana and strawberries and, and raw milk like that. I, I should be good, you know, cause it's, it's just bananas. But like that would just lead into like a slippery slope of like want, like craving other sweet foods. Uh, so I, I fell off a little bit here and there. And then um, I made a video actually uh, on my YouTube channel blaming the carnivore diet. And I'm like, carnivore doesn't work. It's not for everybody. And then I, I had to take my girlfriend, uh, my wife was like, Pablo, like you ate, like you didn't eat carnivore, you know, like you did it. But like, remember the time you ate that one time we ate like pasta, one time we ate the cake. You know, one time you had a smoothie. I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess I just didn't do it right. And it's sort of like my analogy is kind of like with AA. Like if you don't like you can't just do it on the weekdays and then on the weekends you go to the bar. You know, it's just like that. Like like there's no cheating on this. You know, uh, cheating for me now is like eating like pork rinds or something, you know, with with like extra, you know, fat cottage cheese because the lactose and what not. So like my cheating days now are like, you know, still carnivore based, but maybe a little bit more on the keto side. That's how I cheat now. I cheat, I cheat with keto. Um, so February 15th day after th um, Valentine's day, I had to have chocolate on Valentine's day, of course. So after, right after that, I was like, okay, this is it. I'm doing this seriously now, you know? And um, I've been carnivore ever since. So it's been a little bit over a month. Um, it feels like my, my, my body doesn't hurt at all. Like I have no hip pain. I used to have a hip pain that I used to like, I used to like punch it. You know what I mean? Cause I'd be like, or I used to like try to punch a different side of me and be like, okay, well, if I hurt that side of me, then maybe this one won't hurt as much kind of thing, you know, kind of balance it out or, or direct the, the pain somewhere else on my body. It was, it was crazy. I'm like, you know, my lower back and, and my joints always popping. Um, so I honestly, I haven't felt any pain ever since that day. Um, like my, my hips, it doesn't hurt to like get up from, you know, from my, I used to have to get out of my car and I'd be like struggling. And so my, my sleep ever since I started, I've been sleeping, I mean, just straight through the night which normally like doesn't happen. I, I would wake up with like anxiety, you know, like, oh my God, I have to do this thing. Oh my God, I got to file taxes. Oh my God, I got to, you know, do this one thing. Oh, I didn't do this. And like now that anxiety or whatever it is, like, I don't know, it's just, it's gone. You know, like I can think of like the worst thing that could happen and that 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 pit in my stomach or like in between like my, my solar plex is like gone. I used to get this like almost debil debilitating you know, uh, str uh, a stroke in my, in my heart. I'm like, Oh man, like, dude, I'm, I'm screwed or, or, you know, and now I just feel like this, like calmness, you know, like sort of like grounded. And I guess it's because we're eating food. That's like, you know, just closest to nature. And, um, my clothes fits better. You know, I'm, I'm putting on, I didn't want to get rid of any of my clothes and, and, because I'm like, no, I know I'm going to fit in it. You know, I didn't just buy it for like a one time use. I'm, I'm going to fit back in it. And lo and behold, I'm, I'm fitting into those, you know, those those shirts and those pants. And, you know, my waist size is shrinking. I'll be honest, like my weight isn't going down. Um, but that's because I work out a lot. You know, I'm in the gym like th at least three days a week. And I'm doing um, I'm doing, you know, uh, weightlifting. So I, I, I think you know, I, I don't really look at the weight at the scale so much right now. And it's only been a month, you know, I, I, I need to be patient. Like I would like to lose 20, 30 pounds, but I think, you know, that's, that's going to happen over time. 
Um, I think this is like a progressive thing. It's not like a perfection. You know, it just gets better after, you know, after a while, you start to like, you know, understand it more. You know, maybe I maybe I fall off one more time. I don't think so. I don't have any reservations. But maybe, you know, maybe I maybe I do. But, you know, I, I'm going to get back on the horse. I know that this is like the way until I find out something else, you know, that's that's better for me. You know, maybe just breathing the air and not eating at all. I don't know. I mean, I doubt that because I love food. I mean, I'm a chef. Um, but this is what I'm going to be doing, you know, at least for for the rest of you know the rest of my life. So, just got to one one thing that you said there that I, I want to kind of emphasize. Um, you said, "I'm willing to accept this is a progressive thing," or words to those effect uh, to that effect yeah. about losing weight, right? Right. I think this is another thing about the calm that comes across you, because any other diet that you're on, any time in your life, it's all like it's always like, "Why isn't it happening? It's not coming off," but with carnivore, it's like I feel good. I'm I'm happy to wait for the weight loss to happen as it you know, right? As it goes. I think it's because I'm enjoying it. You know, it's not like I'm eating canned tuna and lettuce with you know a drizzle of vinegar and like a little bit of oil on it because like that's what health used to be. You know, it was like low fat. So it was like a oh my god, when is when, when can I stop eating like this? But like I'm enjoying like eating steaks and oxtail. And you know, just cooking all all sorts of all sorts of goodies, eggs and butter and and all that. It's um, yeah, and, and I, I I need to be like, I, I just need to be patient because, just like anything else, it's it's gonna it's gonna take time, you know. And if it's if it's worth it, it's it's gonna it has to take more time, you know. And of course, the the absence of pain makes the the waiting or the the progress much easier to deal with, right? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's the best part. It doesn't even feel like a, it doesn't feel like a diet. You know, it it doesn't feel like a struggle. Um, it's just like a yeah, it, yeah. The the absence of pain is is fantastic. I mean, the the quality of my life has um, has improved a hundred percent eating eating this way and i don't want to put the 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 carriage before the horse um i think that's how the expression goes um you know i don't want to say oh this is like the magic bullet or anything like that but there is something that i'm feeling in real time that's completely you know that's that's evident yeah i don't want to just be like oh this because i used to say that about veganism oh this is amazing uh this is like the best thing ever when i first Got, when I first went vegan, you know, it's because I got off of all the crap food. Like that's, I think that's why people feel feel better when they're on veganism at first because they stop eating all that processed foods. But this something feels different about this. Something feels like this actually like makes sense. You know, now I'm now I look at like like vegan um, vegan foods and actually I just watched your vegan video yesterday of uh, you. Uh, uh, you were reviewing uh, a vegan. This guy said everybody must go vegan or something like uh, that. The, Be the Belgian guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was such a depressing interview, you know, like that dark area and that light, that lamp behind him, and just there was no excitement in in it, you know. Um, you know what? Uh, one more thing I wanted to to bring up. Um, I, um, I was on TRT for a little bit, right? My, my doctor, I went to a doctor for the first time in years and he prescribed uh, TRT because I just turned 40 and he was like, your testosterone is low. That was October, 2022. I got off of it October, 2023 um, because I just didn't like the way it made me feel. And I didn't like that I was gonna be on it the rest of my life. And if I wanna have kids, it's like something that you don't really, you don't really wanna do that. You know, unless you're mixing in other drugs to combat that. Um, so now I'm like, you know, it was tough at first getting off of it because your body is like not producing its own testosterone. For those that don't know, TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. And um, so now I'm just doing it naturally. So I've been off of it for months now. And 
you know, my body's kind of like, I still, I, I feel like because I'm eating a, a high fat, high protein diet, I feel like a lot of that natural testosterone in my body started to uh, reboot and I started to produce my own again. So I am going to like take a blood test to see where my levels are at in a few months. Uh, just to, just to see if, you know, if, if uh, carnivore can help me um, in that aspect of my life. I, I'd love to get you back on after you have the blood test and, and talk about that too. That'd be, sure. uh, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. Um, so I, I've got a couple of questions for you. The first one is uh, it, it's not, not really relevant to your journey, but I'm just so interested. And that's, did they ever find the contraband on the vegan compound? Like all the, all the meat you were eating, did they ever oh, find it so or were the instant sticks enough? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe they did smell it and I was just playing stupid. Like kind of like when I was on, on drugs, I would be like, nah, nobody can tell, you know, but really I was like bumping from wall to wall and I had all this like rage and stuff. I'm sure, you know, it was the same thing, but it's actually funny that you mentioned that because the owners of that, um, of that retreat center, they were like strict vegan for years. I mean, they were, um, like deadheads type of thing, you know what I mean? Like just very hippie and, and I just spoke to them recently and they're moving, they're moving somewhere, um, here in the States, like on some farmland and they're eating meat again and they're eating. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're off of the vegan diet as well, which is like, it's kind of crazy, but like 2020 shifted a lot of like people's minds about a lot of things. You know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, deception out there and we started to realize like okay they're lying about this what else are they lying about you know we started to kind of wake up a little bit i would say like 2020 is like you know you have clear vision you know it's like that 2020 vision you can just see you see something that you didn't see before the veil is unlifted and i think they started to do a little bit more research because they were they were older they were like 70 years old one of them would always have like some sort of like outbreak like a like a like a herpy outbreak or something you know from just the lack of and he would always be tired and and they were like you know they were they were thin you know like really like you know um malnourished so we spoke to them recently and yeah they're 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 eating meat again and so i was i wanted to be like you know by the way i was eating you know i was eating meat at your at your you know retreat center I'm, you know, hope that's okay. I kind of want to like, you know, I have him on my, my, my fourth step to, uh, to, to, to admit to him my, my wrongs. Um, but nice. yeah, they, they never found anything technically. <laughs> nice. Um, so how are you eating day to day now? Um, so I, um, if I eat breakfast, it's, it's eggs, eggs with, um, you know, farm raised eggs, or pasture raised eggs. We have a local farm here, so we get raw milk. So I start my morning raw dairy, raw butter and all that. I start my day off with like a little bit of coffee, um, which I make at home. I don't do the Starbucks thing. I'm not a Starbucks fan, never was, never will be. Um, and uh, so, you know, we start off with some eggs in the morning. If I eat breakfast, if not, I'll go straight to lunch. I don't get hungry as much uh, eating this way. like. You know, it's very satiating, very nutrient dense. So I'll eat the night before. If I eat again, it's like noon and I might have like, I'll just probably have some leftovers. You know, I cook leg of lamb. Like we cook, we cook every night for dinner. I make something, you know, octopus. Uh, we don't have a lot of seafood, but every once in a while we will do some. Um, so whatever is like leftover or, or like a ribeye steak or something like that. And I usually eat like one to two meals a day tops you know it used to be a lot more and then for dinner we'll just we'll create we'll always create something new you know we'll make some pot roast or or steaks um chicken wings sometimes i don't know why i just like i crave chicken wings sometimes not chicken breast or or thighs even the thighs are i i don't mind the thighs i don't mind you know the, the fattiness of those but uh but chicken wings is another one and um yeah, but mostly like ruminant, mostly ruminant animals. That's oh. that's like that's what I eat now. With just some salt. That's it. Mm -hmm. And so your your wife is still doing this with you? 
Yeah, yeah, she is. We both started. We both started together. Yeah, we both started February fifteenth. We we decided, okay, let's let's do it because she started. So she started doing carnivore, and she would before like she would have trouble. Um, she would have trouble communicating with people, like just like words wouldn't come to her, and she would just she would just struggle a little bit. Um, she, she was diagnosed with with dyslexia. So that like, you know, eating, eating, um, I guess, plant based her whole life really didn't help her, her brain. Um, so when she started eating meat, two things happened. She started to get started to get like more clarity and she started to get her brain back is what she says. And then she started like her anxiety came down as well. So she started she would always be kind of a nervous person at work or, you know, just kind of very, very shy. And now she eats meat and, you know, she, she feels grounded. She feels uh, just more alive. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. When you think about yourself, what what is the number one benefit that you've received? You would just say, like, this is just the number one thing that carnivore has done for me. Uh, the number one thing, I think, is uh, my food addiction. You know, because addiction is something that you have to live with your whole life, and it it it's a it you bring it everywhere you go. You know, so if I was if I was at a party or I would go out to dinner with six people and we're like, hey, let's let's all share food. You know, and I'd be like, I don't want to share with you. I want my own plate. You know, and but but now that I know this this food is so like nutrient dense and I don't have to eat as much. Right. I can just like now I don't mind sharing. I don't have that like, oh, I got to eat. You know, I got to eat some chips right now or I got to eat ice cream right now. Like it's not like that. That is probably the best benefit that I've gotten out of it because I because I am an addict in other uh, in other ways that, you know, um, it just it just feels good to not have to be um, so attached to food. You know, besides like, you know, the pain going away and the anxiety going away and 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 feeling more grounded. Those are definitely like some positives. But that one, I would say, is probably the best benefit that I got out of this. Yeah, it, it, it's a really nice feeling, right? And it's a really nice feeling like when you are starting to get hungry, the hunger just comes on really slowly. It's like your your body's your stomach or whatever is tapping you and going, maybe we'll need some food in the next few hours. Right. You know? Whereas the before times, it was like food now. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like you know, I can go. I, I've been doing some fasting, uh, a lot of like intermittent fasting lately. I mean, I can go almost. I did almost twenty four hours the other day. It was my first like real fast in a while um but i'm like before i i could i wouldn't even be able to do that you know i would have to have i would have to have eat something and, and yeah you're right it, it comes on slowly and you're like maybe i'll need some food in a few hours that's kind of like the thought process you know it's like i'm i'm good i'm not gonna die i'm not gonna starve to death you know yeah yeah before it'd be like eat you know eat now or, or I'll, I'll, and stock you know, up just in case we get hungry in a few right. minutes time too. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, I could eat. I could definitely eat. I mean, I was when I was a kid. I was I was a big kid growing up. You know, um, I was overweight. You know, back in high school and and elementary school. Um, that was actually the first time I went on a diet. Um, was you know junior year of, junior year of high school. So I was 15, 16 years old. But I was my first addiction is food. You know that's definitely before before anything else it was definitely food mm. yeah so um if you were giving someone advice on you know getting started with carnivore and how to how to kind of stick to it without falling off the wagon what would you recommend um i would say get rid of anything that isn't aligned with a carnivore diet from your house out of sight out of mind because there, there's going to be times where your um where your parasites or your addiction is going to kick in and be like you know it's fine it's not going to kill you you know it's it's not 
it's, you know, just, just have a little bit and, and you'll get right back on. Two, I would say stock up on foods. Um, stock up on foods that you do want to eat, eggs. Um, maybe get, get some cheese because cheese is like, you know, cheese has um, some casein protein. And I think like some people would consider, some people say that triggers, triggers the same part of your brain as like cocaine. I don't know, it could be like a little bit addicting to some people. But if that's like what you use for your transition, I would say maybe just get some cheese. And when you're craving something sweet, eat cheese because there's lactose in there. And that's a form of that's a form of sugar. So you're still getting it, but you're not getting it in the, that raw form of like sucrose or, or fructose. And C, I would watch uh, Dave Max channel because you, you know, you put out a lot of information. Um, there's always there's always some new revelation with somebody. There's all these like anecdotal stories of people healing on carnivore. Um, I would just, you know, just dive, just dive in watching, watching tons of, you know, of uh, carnivore doctors, carnivore creators, because like the more you learn, the more you understand, the easier it'll be for the transition because then you won't have that excuse. You know, you'll you'll be you'll be armed with the information to help you transition. So I guess those three things would probably be like a good, you know, maybe in that order. I, I really like uh, that thing about being armed with the information as well, because I, I know in the past, previous attempts at keto, you know, I've had I haven't had the information about vitamin C and all that kind of thing coming right. from me, and not having that. It was kind of that excuse to go. Oh, I can I can just jump off this because maybe I need to get the vitamin C. And, exactly. You know, before, before you know and it, you're true. lying under a wheelbarrow full of Krispy Kreme donuts. You know. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's there's um, um, all the information's out there, and you know um, you can get everything that you need from from uh, animal based diet and. Um, Everything else, I look at it now, and um, I just I look at it and I say poison. You know, that's poison. Like, you know, just remember remember where you were, kind of thing. Remember the pain you were in, mentally and physically. Um, remember the struggle. Remember the addiction, and that just kind of keeps me going. And it's it's a one day at a time. You know, like anything else, just just do it for today, and then tomorrow start again. You know, if you feel good, if you wake up and you want to do it again, do it again until, you know, that's why I say it's a progress thing, because after a while you've already, you know, you, you, we've kind of gone through the woods, you know, doing um, harm to our body. So now it's going to take a little bit of time to get out of there. But like once you're out and, you know, you're on the you're on the clear path and and you you know that this is benefiting you and you know this is aligning with you um it's going to be a lot easier to understand it so it's not going to be perfect at first maybe some people do have that like you know that click where it's like oh this is perfect i'm never doing you know i'm never going back and it happens but for me it takes a little bit of time like i start it and then i test you know i i fall off um until until i'm like okay I, I don't want to fall off because I remember what happens when I fall off the boat. You know, I got to swim in the waves, right? It's like, I'd rather be on the boat, you know, hanging out and just, just, you know, being in a, in a, in calm, you know, in, in like a good place. Nice. So really important question. Are you still a chef at a vegan restaurant? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, 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 not, not at all. No, I actually don't work in kitchens anymore. Um, I I love cooking for myself now. Um, I do a couple of things. I have an Amazon store that I started working on during COVID because everything was shut down. So I'm like, okay, let's let's try e-commerce. You know, let's try something else where it doesn't. It's not demanding. I don't have to be because being being a chef is is really tough work. You know, you're you're working all the holidays, all the weekends. You're around a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of people that are also addicted and angry. I mean, there's a lot of like 
you know, it's it's an art. So you're around like a lot of kind of crazy people. So I was just like, I got to get out of I got to get out of this world. So after 20 years, I, I put down my apron. I no longer work in the kitchen. Um, I just I do other things like I, I'm actually a, I'm a sales rep for for a caviar company now. So instead of now, when I go into the kitchen, it, it's not to flip pancakes. It's to, you know, flip caviar. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, Pablo, how can we find you? You mentioned you have a YouTube channel. I do. I do. Uh, it's at Fancy Carnivore. Um, and I, I kind of call it Fancy Carnivore because people used to make fun of me like, oh, you're so fancy because I, I would, you know, do the raw stuff and the organic stuff. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll just use that as, as kind of my handle. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm on I'm on Instagram as well, but I'm not really active on there. I just I'm more on the YouTube. You know, I just love watching. I love watching videos and I make a lot of shorts on cooking. So, I'll, you know, from from the start, from start to finish, I'll somehow compact that into a one minute video. And it seems to be doing pretty good right now. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying cooking for for myself and for my my significant other. Nice. Well, I'll link to your channel in the show notes. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. And I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. And I'm really happy for both you and your wife. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for doing what you do. I, we, we really appreciate it.